All right, let's move away uh, from the philosophy of, of how we structure everything, and let's get back into the nitty-gritty of how we program and what saving these scenes actually looks like. Uh, <clears throat> so let's, let's create some presets together. Now, I'm back in the downtown folder. Obviously, we already have a few set up here, a few good groups. We got some front light stuff. Uh, we got some house stuff. Uh, let's see the front wash. We got colors for that. Pretty cool. Uh, even got an effect for that. Um, no positions for this yet. So there's a few missing pieces, but overall, pretty good, pretty good uh, presets already set. Um, not bad, not bad at all. So there's a few missing pieces. Uh, for instance, I don't see anything for this Intimidator here, MH1. So let's go ahead and create some presets for that guy. And to do that, I'm going to create a new group. Uh, I'm going to call it Intimidator. That's just what the light is, the type of light it is. Um, you guys can name that something else, like I don't know, uh, front wash spot or something like that. But we'll call it an Intimidator for now. I'll create a new group under that called Dimmer. We'll do some Dimmer presets. Uh, let me do some color. We'll do, let's see, Gobo. Uh, new group. Probably Position will be nice. And then maybe something for the beam, like uh, some Zoom presets or some... Uh, prism presets, something like that. So we'll start there. Now, when we're creating presets, it's very important to know what attributes are being recorded. When we hit this plus button up here to create a new preset, we want to know what's being recorded. And the software has a really intuitive way to do that. So uh, take for instance, like when I select MH1 here, uh, my intimidator, and I change the dimmer, notice these little blue dots start appearing, right? One appears over the light, one appears over the shutter, one appears over the dimmer. So anything that we change, for instance, if I selected a color, a little blue dot would appear as that turned. What that blue dot is telling you is, hey, there's an attribute, this attribute is set to the setting, but it's not recorded anywhere. It's not part of a part of a queue or anything like that. It's called an override value. Or uh, yeah, it's, it's just something uh, that is, it's set that way, but it's not recorded in any way. So that's what that little blue dot does. Now I can, uh, I can click that little blue dot to, to clear it out. See, it goes back to white. Uh, but if I hit that, it's gonna create a little blue dot. Now, what happens is when I hit this plus button, it records all the attributes that have blue dots. This is something that we wanna be intensely aware of because if I'm trying to create a preset for this light, but say I've moved the position of these four like that, and then I come over here to create a dimmer preset. If I hit plus right now, that preset is gonna consist of the white here, but it's also gonna consist of the position of these lights. So I need to make sure that before I hit that plus button, the only attributes that have blue dots are the ones that I want recorded. That's really important, because uh, otherwise you'll have values that sneak into your presets, and when you go to turn on a preset, some other light will move and you'll go, what the heck just happened? So what we want to do is we want to come to these lights. We want to uh, get rid of the position uh, effects. So really, I'm going to, you can either clear the individual ones out by going back to position and hitting this little blue dot. Or uh, say you have a bunch and you just want to reset everything. I can hit this little broom right here. It says this overrides. I could just hit that little broom, boom, and it clears all the blue dots. It basically, that little broom snaps it back to either the, the queue that's live or just clears it all out and goes back to normal. So uh, for instance, if I had a queue up, say I had this queue up, and I decided to go ahead and turn on these lights and you know put them in a certain position or something, let's tilt them down, uh, and then I change the color on them and stuff. And I said, ah, I, I changed all this stuff, but I want to go back to just what the queue is. I want to go back to that value. I can just hit this little thing, boom, and it snaps back to the queue, to what the queue look is for that light. So that's really important to know that when we're creating presets, we're recording the values that are marked in blue. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that off. I turn that queue off by hitting play, then stop. Stop goes back to everything off. I'm going to go back to my design view. Okay, and then we're gonna make some dimmer uh, presets. So I'm gonna select the dimmer folder. I'm gonna select the light I wanna change, and then I'm gonna 
Well, we'll do a dimmer at full at first. Uh, and then I'm going to hit this plus button. Light key's really smart. It knows, uh, it kind of auto labels things. So it'll say 100%. And it shows you in this little cloud what attributes are part of this preset now. Like, for instance, if I go to one of the rogue presets um, and I go to position, when I click that preset, it shows me in these little bubbles what attributes are actually part of that preset. So it's a really great way to know what that preset consists of right away. Um, so that's really good. So if I go to effects here uh, for the stage mover, well, the stage movers don't have effects. If I go to, what well, has effects? Let's go to the, um, the front wash effects. Boom. So we, within this preset, we know that there's a shutter attribute, a position attribute, a color attribute. That little wand means there's an effect on it, so there's a color effect, and a dimmer attribute. All within that preset. That's what's contained within it. So that's how we can know. So when I go to my dimmer preset, the only bubble I want to see is dimmer and shutter for whatever light that that preset consists of. So little, just a quick little thing of uh, rule of thumb. Also on a preset, you notice this edit button appears. At any point, I can hit that edit button and change the value or add more values, and then I can just hit update, and all those attributes will be updated. Now, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to come back here, uh, and I'm going to take the color out, boom, and then update. Go back to 100%. So that's how I create presets. And again, when you're creating presets, you want to think, what kind of Lego bricks do I want to create so that I can, that make the most sense so that I can build effective cues, right? So for this, I'm gonna have a dimmer at 100%. Let's make a, um, let's see, shift D at 50. We'll have a 50%, so I'll record that. Uh, let's go again, shift D at 25%. We'll create one of those. Um, and that should be it. We don't need to make an off cue because the default is off. Now we can do color. Uh, so color presets, I think this has a color wheel, so this will be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna hit um, like mint green here, add red, add orange. And I'm just gonna go through every setting that this has and create a preset for it. And the reason I'm gonna do that again is so that I can drag these presets into the queues without having to go into design view and do all that stuff. So I'm just gonna create a preset for every position on the wheel. And I think that will be a pretty sweet thing to do. So um, it was there. I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna do the, I'm actually not gonna do the half colors right now. If uh, you decide that you like the half color thing, I never tend to use them. So that's why I don't really put the half colors in. But if you want them in there, feel free to go and add them. Uh, some gobo presets, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click on here, make a, that one and it'll kind of auto-populate the names, so it makes this really quick and easy to build all of these, which I like a lot. This software is very intuitive in the way that it, uh, uh, it kind of does a lot for you. It kind of tries to get all the hard stuff out of the way, so you can just focus on being creative, which is really dang cool. So, um, let's see. I want to undo all of these attributes. We'll make a beam. Uh, thing we'll put the prism on uh, and then we'll add some focus values in here so if I do this oh, there is no focus how about uh, iris no focus no iris awesome yeah it doesn't have a focus or an iris that's cool so we'll make a prism effect three facet prism and then position effects, uh, you really, to create these presets, you really want to be present. You want to be hooked up to the system so that you can really position that light properly and then save that effect. But let's go ahead and act like we're there and we know what position we want it in. <coughs> so we'll say, okay, well, I want it to be, I don't know, let's put it at uh, two. And let's say we want it to tilt at like 50. Boom, let's say that's a good position. I'm at the theater, I see it, I like it, there's a position. I'm gonna add it, and I'll call that uh, like center stage. So there's a position effect, uh, or a preset that I can use. So that's really all we're doing, is we're going through our lights, and we're creating just 
presets of every attribute that we can add as building blocks to the queues. Uh, making sure that every time we add a preset that the blue dots uh, that we see are only the attributes that we want to record. And as we make that, um, we, can, we can start to build these, these for these lights. So side lights, um, and that's how we build our lists. And so we can pick these things to build effective cues. Now, um, again, we'll take a look at uh, some of the cues we've got here, some of our service cues and what kind of presets we're using in them. So we got our preaching cue here. We can see all the, uh, all the presets we got. Really, the, the, the hardest part of this process is probably uh, just figuring out for your movers what positions you want your movers to be in. For your static lights or uh, for your color stuff, the presets are really, really basic, really straightforward. You just kind of go and change the light to every setting it can be at and uh, create the preset. So it's very simple. Um, the effects are something I'm going to go into a new video and do. Uh, we'll talk about how to create color effects and position effects uh, and add those as presets and, uh, and add them to your cues. So that, that'll be the next video will be how to deal with effects and get our lights moving and do all the fun stuff. So there we go.